so my name is kishore so you know like i have 14 plus years of experience in performance testing and engineering so please do like share and subscribe to my channel so this is my channel performance testing real time training uh, you know let me show you uh, you know like before we uh, before i hand over it to my training partner kumar all right so i have kumar my training partner with me uh, okay so who will be giving today's demo session so let me show you my channel before we start the demo session all right so this is my uh, this is my youtube channel please like share subscribe to my channel so you know like today's demo session would be on performance engineering exclusively and extensively with open source tools all right so you know like uh, uh, i'm happy to introduce like kumar like who is having 15 years of experience in performance engineering and is working for one of the reputed uh, you know product based mnc all right so i will hand over it to kumar uh, yeah kumar, hey. you can take it forward absolutely thanks kisho thanks for that uh, introduction so uh, my name uh, is kumar now uh, some people call me as sarv as well uh, so I'm happy to uh, be called uh, either as a Kumar or Saurav. As, uh, as Kishore mentioned that I am having almost uh, 15 years of experience. So all these years is mainly into the performance engineering, though I started my career uh, with performance testing, uh, but slowly and gradually I moved into performance engineering and that is kind of my area of focus at this moment. So, let me start sharing before I utter any further word. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can see now. Yeah. Great. Uh, guys, just a one request, uh, just be on mute. And uh, uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot unmute yourself and ask questions. Please feel free to stop. This introductory session on this performance engineering is all meant for clearing your doubts, okay, related to performance engineering. So don't worry about uh, whether it's a silly question or a very intelligent question. Don't think about it. Just ask your questions. But let me give a pause. I'll definitely give a pause in between to, to answer, uh, to honor your question, and uh, to move forward as well, okay. So uh, let me get started with that course agenda uh, very quickly. Uh, I believe each one of you have already gone through it, but if you have any questions, so definitely I would like to take a pause and answer your questions. So performance engineering in this course, uh, by the way, we are, uh, right? Uh, so we are, uh, means both Kishore and myself uh, are into this performance engineering and testing uh, areas for quite a long time. So uh, we have a good experience behind us uh, uh, when we have worked uh, on real projects, be it a service-based organizations or product-based organizations. So we have dealt with the, both the approaches very closely. Okay. Uh, our mission uh, very quickly uh, is definitely get you educated more and more on the performance testing and engineering world and have a deep and an extended knowledge on the performance engineering, right? We should create and we should extend our vibrant community of performance engineer. That's one of our mission that we have right now. Uh, I think uh, Kishore has already explained that why and we are different from others. I will not go through this uh, uh, particular slide, uh, but if you want to take a look at it, please take a look at and uh, ask any questions at the end of this particular uh, topic. Uh, Saru, you, you can quickly explain those uh, the previous slide. Yeah, this one. Hey, uh, Kishore, uh, you, you are sound very feeble. Can you come again? Yeah, uh, you can quickly go through this slide, please. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I will be happy to. Uh, so. This course is definitely an instructor-led uh, session, right? So uh, we'll be taking the sessions uh, on the weekends. Uh, the session will last for two to three hours. 
and this session would have a, a kind of hands-on experience, both a, a theoretical and hands-on experience. So it will be equally divided as and when applied to get you under to get you understand on the real time problem, uh, finding bottlenecks, using various tools, how effectively you can use it. So all these things required uh, hands-on experience with the various tools available in the open source market. Uh, as a performance engineer, I'm an advocate of uh, open source tooling, right? Uh, the open source community has come a long way, right? To support each and every aspect of software development life cycle. Uh, and each and every segment has an equivalent and adoptable performance engineering tool. Okay. So I like to go through those performance engineering tools rather than a paid tool. If you have a specific requirement like AppDynamic, Dynatrace, Plunk, or anything else, I think Kishore would be able to help you uh, there for sure. Okay. Uh, so this is, I treat it as a full stack performance engineer. Now, probably you guys have heard of full stack uh, developer, right? who not only develops that uh, front end, but also back end and takes care of each and every aspect of the software development life cycle or a product, okay? Now, when I say full stack performance engineer, as a performance engineer, I strongly believe and recommend a good performance engineer not only have or have a knowledge on a specific layer. We are talking about a stack, right? A software stack consists of not only on the programming language, the programming language you are uh, writing your code to, but you have to run this particular code on a specific platform. Like you need a CPU, you need a memory, you need a storage, you need a network to connect to your server, right? So when I say full stack performance engineer, it's, I'm not going to talk only about the software performance engineering. Definitely there's an integral part of that full stack performance engineering course, but I'm also going to talk about and teach you about hardware performance engineering. Why? More in, in today's world, in cloud infrastructure, right? Uh, we are going, almost all the organization going uh, to cloud. Now, the infrastructure performance engineering also takes a precedence in the performance engineering world. So I would like to take a uh, look at the hardware aspects as well and how they are influencing your software performance. So in nutshell, full performance engineering, full stack performance engineering is not about software performance engineering, but hardware performance engineering as well which includes, as I told, network, CPU, memory, your disk, and the corresponding interfaces, okay? Uh, I'm going to take care of, uh, take an example of real life example. Uh, basically, uh, what kind of scenario that you may face for a typical Java-based application, gateway-based application, and how you'd like to take a look at it the bottlenecks, how do you identify it? How do you uh, fight it out? And how do you solve the problem? So all these are from the real life example. I'm going to take a uh, take that session on. As I told you, this is a mix and match of both uh, theoretical as well as uh, hands-on experience. So we'll, we'll be covering all these. Initial assessment uh, probably if you want, you can be in touch with Kishore for an initial, initial assessment uh, for your, where you are, right? That will help us to understand uh, where exactly uh, you have to be more focused on. Each and every individuals are different, right? So one may have, I think this group may have a 10 years of plus of experience as well as three plus years of experience. So I cannot treat everyone on the same page. So each one of you may need a different plan altogether, which will eventually get you to the level, okay? So we will be happy to assist you for initial assessment, to understand your level of understanding and to help you to reach to that level, okay? Assess, and, and another thing that bi-weekly assessment we are talking about, is, is to 
see that where exactly you are during the course itself. This is different from initial assessment. Initial assessment is a one-time activity and bi-weekly is an every two weeks we'll be going through some of the course, some of the quizzes, some of the uh, uh, questions and answer which would eventually help you to understand where you are. And again, that will eventually help you to understand how fast you have to go on, other, on the previously covered subject, okay? Uh, we will not only teach you, but we will also provide a constructive feedback. Constructive feedback in the sense, based on the bi-weekly assessment, we'll identify that your areas of strength, areas of weakness, and help you to uh, locate where exactly you have to spend more time to improve yourself. These are weekend patches. Now, it's already been mentioned. I'm going to cover each weekend two to three hours course. It's a pretty lengthy course. The entire course lasts for 40 hours approximately. It may take uh, beyond 40 hours. So I may say that it may take 40 to 50 hours to be on the surface side. And each week we are going to spend almost two to three hours on, on the minimum side. So it may take up to approximately around uh, three to four months to get it done completely. And as it is a very rigorous course, I need your full attention for each and every uh, session. We may, due to some personal uh, uh, constraints, we may, uh, may not be able to join, but I think Kishore is uh, uh, have an equ uh, equally uh, good setup to record and to share with you, right? Kishore, please correct me if I'm wrong here, okay? Yeah, sure, Tomas, yeah. Yeah, so, we would be also happy to do a personalized uh, mentorship, okay? Uh, any uh, uh, personalized mentorship, please reach out to Kishore to set up a call with either with Kishore or myself. I would be happy to spend time and help you to grow, okay? Uh, Kishore, already, uh, are, Kishore already has done some good work in uh, uh, helping you to build a powerful resume, but we will, I will also be equally uh, provide my help to you to make it more uh, brighter to the recruiter, okay? And we'll be uh, also conducting, uh, at the end of the course, we'll be conducting the mock interview to make you industry ready, okay? So that you can face any challenges during the interview without much, much hesitance and with much, much bigger confidence, okay? I would like to take a pause here. If you have any questions, please ask to me or uh, Kishore. I would, uh, we would be happy to answer you. Any question here? No question? No, no questions, thank you. Okay, great. So let me go ahead. Who is this course for? So as I uh, understand that we have uh, three years plus experience, we have 10 years plus experience, we may have someone who has just uh, stepped into this world, okay? So like a fresh graduate who are pretty new to the performance testing and engineering world, we'll be making sure that each one of you are up to the mark and when you end the course, you are all at the same level, okay? Maybe you may not have that, uh, that practice that uh, industry experience behind you at the equal level, but knowledge wise, uh, we'll make sure that you all are on the same page. Okay. So a performance system wants to build their career into performance engineering are equally uh, uh, welcome. Performance engineer who has started as a performance engineer, but wanted to acquire knowledge, gain more confidence into the performance engineering world, are also welcomed. Software developers, right, who are just uh, developing the codes. Performance engineering is one aspect that is gaining a prominence uh, for the last four or five years, right? People and the business are more concerned about the non-functional aspect of uh, software development lifecycle or a product, okay? They're equally giving confidence and equally giving importance to your performance engineering work. How do you prevent any failure due to performance uh, issues in production. Performance issues are always having a business impact, right? You probably, if you heard 
uh, the big billion say dollar uh, uh, big billion dollar sell uh, in 2014 by flipkart right flipkart had a uh, suffer crash during that uh, sell what happened they lost a huge amount of revenue because of the server cash okay but they come back they fought it they come back they strong uh, they come back strong and they i have not heard any any crashes uh, after that uh, from the flip card in the recent past okay so their strategies changed they gave equal importance to performance capacity and that is how they they avoided any such glitches in the recent past and their business model agree uh, this is also going to be helpful for the managers who are right now handling a team of developers or a quality team assurance team but also wants to learn something on the performance engineering world so different aspects of performance engineering we should eventually set up the team over there and grow from there right so in nutshell this is equally uh, we we are equally uh, open to anyone who wants to make their career or wants to acquire knowledge in the performance engineering or testing world. Okay. Any question here? I'll take a, a few seconds. Uh, stop here. Okay. I think uh, silence is no. Uh, how? Sorry. We can go ahead. Take no more questions. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the next one is uh, how this course will benefit you. Uh, this course will definitely, uh, once you complete it, you will be able to uh, do a performance instrumentation, measurement, reporting activities for any sort of performance uh, uh, management, application performance management work by yourself. Uh, understand the data required to assess and to assess end-to-end -end system performance and how to obtain it. You can also build intuitive or instinctive understanding on application performance issues. What does it mean? Is that by seeing that symptoms, you'd be probably have an intuition or an instinct that the problem may be at a certain layer in the stack, right? Rather than the going through that entire stack or performance or uh, performance uh, bottleneck or identification, okay? So you'll be building, will be ha uh, helping you to build that uh, intuitiveness, instinct instinctiveness uh, in you to, to, uh, to assess the performance, to understand where exactly the bottleneck is, okay? <clears throat> Sorry. You would be also familiar with the performance engineering methodologies, techniques uh, to build a complex distributed system. So I'll be touch based on uh, the system design as well, how the system is designed in nutshell and where exactly the performance engineer will be very much helpful to build a, build a performant, robust, uh, scalable application, which is also built for availability, okay? So all this uh, system engineering uh, thing will also be covering the performance aspects of it as well. So you'll be able to understand why the system was built in certain way rather than the other way. And what kind of performance aspects is being covered, be it a WhatsApp, be it a Netflix. We are going to take a, a few examples and walk you through that what are the steps and what are the uh, technologies implementation process implementation they have made in their full stack uh, software development to ensure that the performance is met the availability aspects is met the scalability aspects of uh, the software is met also uh, you would be you would be able to deliver a performance uh, engineering for an uh, for, for uh, your uh, service-based organizations or the product-based organizations, the approaches may differ based on the organizations you are from, but uh, the overall performance engineering cultures will remain the same. So you may uh, be able to influence uh, uh, your uh, customer, your uh, 
uh, senior management to to understand how this is going to help the product right you will become an evangelist uh, rather than just a performance engineer as well okay that totally based on your interest but we will help help you to grow that to that level okay uh, this is what uh, the course will uh, benefit you okay so before going into that uh, actual uh, session for or a more technical session for uh, today i would like to take a pause and uh, ask people to ask me questions okay hold on uh, okay feel free to unmute yourself if you have any queries yeah so we'll take a few few seconds pause here and happy to help you to get uh, uh, your questions uh, answered either by me or kishore and meantime i will take uh, some water as well mm -hmm. Guys, the one request. Any APM tool? Any APM tool you're going to explain in this course? Uh, Kishore, you would like to uh, take this question? Yeah. Uh, so, may know, may may know who is asking. You. This is Teju from Bangalore. Yeah. So I just need to know, like, any 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 particular APM tool uh, we have uh, covered in this uh, course? Yeah. So, Teju, so we are planning this course as exclusively, you know, performance engineering with open source tools. So, you know, like uh, if, if there is any specific requirement for any APM tool like uh, Dynatrace or, you know, uh, App, App D, like we have a separate, you know, uh, we will take it as a separate uh, training session. So, you know, but the, I mean, like Kumar, like who is going to, uh, Sauru Kumar, like who is going to, you know, deliver this training session. Would be with exclusively with the open source tools. Okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to add, uh, uh, Kishore, on top of it, right? Okay. Uh, as I uh, already mentioned, I am an advocate of uh, open source, and uh, today that industry is going uh, towards uh, most people, most industries are picking up this open source tool, right? And we have a good uh, resources av available in the open source. But at the same time, I cannot deny the fact that the license to like app dynamics or directors are providing you. They are uh, helping you to understand uh, the performance bottleneck in your software stack and try to identify it more quickly. Uh, but uh, in future, uh, we would have an equally uh, important tool from the performance uh, in the open source in the performance engineering world which would, e would equally give you that uh, same uh, knowledge a uh, same insight into the software performance uh, bottlenecks okay so i'm going to cover all this uh, open source one right which would eventually uh, not under any sort of uh, paid license category and which will be easily downloadable not having any legal compliance issues as such and you would be happy to use it when and as and when required okay yes thank you okay any further question uh, hello yeah no, no. Um, this is Ibrahim Kishore. Like, you know, I just have a couple of questions. Like, one thing is, you know, do we need, uh, I mean, I, uh, but uh, do we need any programming language to uh, learn this performance engineering? Hands on experience. I would uh, say, uh, uh, may I know, Ibrahim, uh, your, uh, your uh, engineering, I mean, in which stream you did your engineering? Uh, or MCA? Yeah, yeah, MCA. I, I am in MCA actually. Okay. Uh, so oh, good. Yeah. So MCA, I believe that you know the basic uh, programming uh, model, right? Like uh, how this if else, how the loop works, yeah, yeah. how the switch. I think for the timing, it's okay. Okay. But eventually, I would also help you to understand because 
we are going in depth, we'll be going in depth with the Java performance engineering, which will definitely mm -hmm. require you to understand how, what is object, by the way, we all talked about objects, right? right. And we all talked about how the heap is there to, uh, to manage those objects. But to be honest with you, if we wanted to go one step deeper, uh, we have to understand how these objects are created and what these objects are. I would provide you enough details uh, to make you understand what are these things, right? Because if you just listen that objects are being part of Java performance and uh, Java language, you would probably not be able to understand the deeper meaning of it, right? How they are managed, how they are garbage connected, right. all those stuff. But don't worry right. about this stuff, uh, Ibrahim. I'll, as I told you that we are not all at the same page. My duty and Kishore duty are to make you to, when you end this course, you all should be on the same page, same level, right? Okay. So we'll, we'll be covering all those nitty gritty details as well. And I, as a part of this uh, unique uh, uh, course, we'll be have providing you the individual mentorship as well, right? So if you have any questions that how we can make it up, we'll be providing the required assistance to you. So in nutshell, do not worry. If you okay. have a uh, programming language, it's good, but uh, means it, that is equally okay if you don't have much. Okay, so I you know we talk like something on garbage and other things. Mm -hmm. So are we covering any memory leaks also? I mean, memory leak testing kind of things also in this? Uh, we'll be covering uh, what is memory leak, okay? Uh, and so uh, what, sorry? Yeah, please. Yeah. Please okay. Go. We'll be covering the memory leak with respect to the Java uh, runtime environment. We'll be covering what are the symptoms based on which you can detect a memory leak. Okay. Or understand this may be a, a memory leak issue. What are the uh, uh, metrics that you, you should collect? How you would uh, basically go through these metrics through open source tooling? Okay how to detect a memory leak in the application, whether it's a memory leak issue or something else, okay? And how to fix it. All this will be covered under this one topic. I think it is under module three. Okay, okay. Uh, um, but I know uh, another question, like small question, like, you know, I joined yeah. last little, little bit mm -hmm. late actually. So, I mean, uh, how many hours, uh, I mean, the entire curriculum it is? It's a 40 hours course, Ibrahim. Yeah. Okay, approximately 40. So I would like to take uh, another five to 10 hours buffer. So roughly 40 to 50 hours, I'll be happy to complete it. So if it's like, you know, okay, I will talk to Kishore. I mean, another timings also, I mean, maybe evening or morning. I mean, I will get back to Kishore. If yeah, I think uh, we can work on the timing, which is suitable for all of you, okay? Uh, so yeah, Kishore uh, can take up uh, uh, and schedule a uh, session for two to three hours, which uh, is suitable for all of us. Take uh, care. Hi. Hi. Aruna here. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so as you were speaking that we will be given with some realistic uh, real live issue. So yeah. will we be given with any environment where we can use and that there any issues will be simulated so that we can uh, identify the engineering problem? Uh, what we can, uh, Kishore? Yeah. yeah. Kishore, yeah. you have any input? Sorry, I, I heard some noise. Okay, so her question is like, uh, you know, like, uh, do we have any, will we set up any uh, applications like to reproduce the issue? I know okay. so that we'll get a, uh, no, I, I got the question. I thought that probably you you're trying to answer. Uh, you have any point before I move ahead and answer Aruna? Yeah, so we can, uh, yes, we can do that. Like we can, uh, we can deploy some applications and we can repro uh, we can produce memory leaks and, you know, like uh, various performance uh, bottlenecks and we can, you know, like uh, do that like uh, with a real understanding of the issue and how to fix the that performance bottleneck. Yeah, and in addition, uh, what I was trying to tell Aruna uh, is that I'll be providing the code 
written by uh, me okay uh, which will eventually help you to produce a memory leak kind of uh, situation okay in in the environment by running in the environment and how you effectively you can use the tooling to identify the memory leak and how would you identify the memory leak apart from it how would you fix it okay so okay. yeah so uh, and one thing one disclaimer i wanted to make that that may not be an enterprise level application because it is hard to build for uh, me to build an enterprise level application with a lot of complexity but the example would be more realistic okay uh, uh, based on some demo uh, application or a custom code which will be written by me and i will share those uh, does it answer your question or yes yeah okay any further question before we uh, go into that uh, modules what will be covered I have got two questions. Just explain the. Yeah. I'm going to explain what are the topics covered in this session. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. That is my next topic. That what are the things that I'm going to cover in this session, in this uh, entire forty-hour session. Okay. So shall we move, Kishore? Yeah. Yes. Please. Hello. Yes. I have a small question, sir. Uh, yeah. How many days it will take to be an expert in this performance testing? I mean, I want to uh, keep some experience on this, just uh, three to four years. Mm -hmm. So, how many months it takes, or exactly? Uh, uh, may I know your name, please? I'm Karthik. So, Karthik, uh, definitely it requires uh, a tremendous uh, focus on this course, for sure. Okay. Okay. At the same time, your hands-on experience also matters most. So whatever homework uh, or that hands-on experience, you will get it from the training, try to emulate at your home whenever you are free, okay? I know that uh, most of you may be working, okay? So whenever you get a time during the weekend, try to emulate all this by yourself, which would eventually help you to go stronger. To answer your question, it's definitely not a overnight or a month job. It requires at least to me four to six months to have a knowledge, okay? okay, and years of experience behind you to be at the expert level. Okay, mm -hmm. so we will try to provide you the platform from where you can build yourself, right? You have yes. all the knowledge once you complete that uh, course. And as and when you get that opportunity, try to impart the knowledge in your day-to-day -to -work, day -day work, right? Which would eventually build your experience. Okay. Did yes. I answer your question, Karthik? Yeah, yeah. And one more thing I wanted to tell you that, uh, again, I'm repeating. Talk to uh, uh, Kishore. Set up a one-on-one -on -one with me as well. Uh, if you have any specific question about your personal mentorship, would be happy to help you there. Okay. okay. Ultimately, my and Kishore goals are same. We wanted to build you to the level and give you the platform where from you can build yourself in the performance engineering world. Right. So our motive is very clear. Mission is very clear. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Yeah. Okay, uh, guys, uh, for the sake of uh, time management, I'm going ahead. Uh, if you have any further questions, please reach out to Kishore and we'll be happy to assist you. Okay, so the course is uh, divided into five modules, okay, and additional sixth module with the hardware concepts. Okay, so uh, I hope that you are able to see my screen, uh, see the PDF of the course digits. Okay. So the first module will be covering the performance engineering aspect of software. Okay. I would uh, take five to 10 minutes today to take you through and give you the glimpse of the performance engineering. Why, what is the importance of performance engineering and how much difference it is, different it is from the performance testing. 
okay in this particular uh, uh, module we'll be explaining you how application performance uh, impacts that uh, business okay what are the diff sorry what are the typical performance issues that you may see in day to day world right sometimes in the recent past i believe uh, uh, in last two months we have an outage of uh, twitter we had an outage of facebook we had an outage in whatsapp as well okay uh, those who are regularly following the performance engineering or uh, performance uh, news probably had heard that news that we had the brief uh, uh, outage in those uh, uh, applications or those softwares right why uh, the why this has happened i am going to cover that as well here okay in the with the latest and greatest example that we have in the recent past okay uh, definitely every business that we run uh, in the software industry is related to revenue right you choose any application if that application a model doesn't generate revenue uh, the application model will fail right so any outages related to performance is having a direct impact on the revenue like i mentioned in 2014 we have big billion day crash server crashed in flipkart okay that caused them a huge amount of loss because all the businesses all the orders were people were not able to uh, place the order and eventually they move out okay move out of flipkart so what would happen if uh, amazon right now uh, uh i think they are also running some sort of uh, uh, deal uh in the month of uh, october and november during diwali probably what will happen if uh, during the peak hours the site goes down okay eventually you would uh, uh, move away from this site and you would uh, start searching for the required product in other uh, e-commerce platform so they would eventually lose the business so how all these basically matters uh with respect to revenues i am going to give you the real time example what happened in the recent past what are the factors uh are playing a part in performance right like architecture workload and data set these are the important aspects which are governing the performance aspects of an application so we are going to cover all this in uh in this particular module i think uh, if someone already joined and attending uh, kishore's uh, performance testing uh, uh, course he has probably uh, kishore uh, please do stop me uh, and correct me i think you have already covered the importance of workload why workload modeling is important okay and how to perform the workload modeling so i may not go into deep and uh, deeper uh, uh, here uh rather i would try to touch base on this particular topic and uh, uh probably uh, will help you to understand why it is uh, uh, relevant in this particular context yeah yeah sir so i am covering it in my performance testing training so few of uh, the joiners uh, who joined now like are from the my current uh, great highly batch amazing great so uh, we'll we'll see that yeah, that uh, how uh, each one of you required knowledge and probably uh, if not then probably we can uh, have a very little touch base on this and then we can move forward okay now another topic uh, another more topic in this particular why data set is important i told you that architecture workload data set these are the three different aspects and important aspect of performance engineering okay how data set is going to impact your performance if your application data set is of let's say 2 terabyte will you get the same performance when it becomes 10 terabyte okay i am going to explain you that how the size in the database data set how the complexity in the data may change your application performance okay so why it is so much of having so much of importance uh, i am going to cover you typical web architecture and its major component and this is where i am going to focus on a uh, system design i will pick up a uh, few of the system which uh, is very much relevant in today's world like i think most of you are using whatsapp few uh, most of you may use the netflix as a streaming platform because of the covid 19 situations netflix uh, 
and the user base has gone up people are having uh, more viewing hours in netflix amazon prime and other streaming platform i would pick up this netflix how it was designed and i would try to cover the performance aspect what are the performance things they have implemented in their software stack which would eventually help you uh, to have a non-stop video streaming uninterrupted video streaming and seamless experience okay and i would also cover in this uh, particular topic uh, something called horizontal versus vertical scaling scaling okay and i'm going to cover the performance engineering role in nurture okay uh i think one thing i missed uh, to mention i want the session uh, this is re irrelevant to the modules uh, but i would like to give a stress i would like to have a session which is more interactive i i don't want to speak non-stop in these sessions but i also wanted to uh, uh wanted you to also speak ask questions okay have an interactive session as much as possible that would give me a motivation for me to uh, put a, a, a real effort as well as it will help you to concentrate okay i would i am i'm really good at remembering name okay uh, so eventually i may pick up few of you uh, to to have a better conversation okay but nonetheless my intention is to have a more interactive session i would like to take a pause answer your questions and then move forward rather than me speaking for two and three hours which may not be uh, at the end of the hours may not be so much helpful to you guys okay so this is my duty to make you more interactive okay and your duty too okay now moving forward with the module two here we will be focusing on the performance monitoring monitoring is a very very crucial factor and important aspect of performance engineering right if you don't monitor or measure any performance metrics then there will not be any data and we'll be helpless to conclude whether we have a performance issue or not right so to understand any performance issue in the stack we would definitely need a good performance monitoring tool and a defined approach of performance indicator defined a uh, performance indicator and an approach how to collect it okay so this particular say module will be covering all the aspects and nonetheless we will we'll be covering both linux as well as windows platform on this platform what are the utilities are already available okay and how effectively we are going to use them how effectively we are going to interpret the data and how effectively we can represent those data to our to the customer or to the product engineering team okay so that part will be covering um, here so as a part of this module will be help you will be helping you to understand uh, what is monitoring versus measuring okay uh, different terminology and critical terminology like kpis sls slis uh, available performance monitoring tool available uh, at this moment in open source free utility in linux and uh, some paid versus uh, licensed tool okay uh, we'll be also covering uh, different layers of the application stack and what are the different tools we have for monitoring each and every layer in the application stack as i mentioned this course is uh, you can treat it as a full stack performance engineering so your for a typical web based application the request generate from your browser right for a thin client thin client is nothing but your application running on uh, uh, servers right and your application is accessible through browsers so this thin client uh, when you try to access them you need a browser like uh, google chrome uh, mozilla uh, you you mozilla firefox or you need uh, internet explorer okay what are the tools available on those browsers 
which will eventually help you to understand how the browser performance works, how the performance of browser looks like. Then we would be moving towards network, application system, hardware, all these layers, identify what is the best tool available in the open source and how we can get best out of it to understand the performance issue, okay? And lastly, as I mentioned, that it will cover both Linux and uh, uh, Windows-based application. Okay. Next one is, uh, okay, uh, this is a very, very important uh, part of this entire course. Uh, before that, I would like to take a pause. Again, uh, any questions on this, on these two modules? Or any other expectation you may have? I'll take uh, your silence as a no then. So let us go move, move forward then. So why it is so important? This is, this is where uh, we'll be spending most of our 40 hours, okay? Java is a very popular language in today's world, right? And it is still evolving. Right now we have JDK 14, JDK 1, 4, 14, right? Most of you are probably familiar with JDK 8 or 11 because enterprise are very reluctant to add up the newest of JDK version, okay? Eventually they will be, but at this moment, uh, what I am aware of JDK 8 and JDK 11 is being used heavily. JDK 14, though it's the very latest and greatest offering from the open JDK world as well as Oracle, but it's still to be adopted by various organizations. So how Java changes the face of internet, right? Pick up any application, any database right now. Have you heard of NoSQL databases, right? Like Cassandra, okay? It is written in Java, okay? Yes. You know, huh, sorry, yes. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so you pick up uh, uh, an application like uh, I think I believe that you heard of ELK, uh, uh, Enterprise uh, Elastic Search, uh, Locks Just Kibana, right? This is a very popular application. This is entirely written on Java. Okay, there are various applications which are writ written on Java at an enterprise level and how effectively we can apply the performance engineering approaches for a Java-based application to detect any sort of performance issue and to help the product engineering team to improve uh, the performance of the application, okay? So we will be talking about something called compile time versus runtime in Java. I think, uh, was it Karthik or Ibrahim who asked that, uh, what sort of knowledge you, you may need for uh, Java and to get into the Java performance engineering. So we'll be helping you out to get to that uh, level uh, to acquire this knowledge, okay? So we'll be discussing about components, various component part of the Java runtime system, okay? Uh, one important aspect of Java runtime system being provided by the Java virtual machine. Uh, we have a different implementation of JVM through Oracle, IBM, Azure, but this course will be focusing on the Oracle one. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. I just have this one small question. Yeah. Uh, uh, as I see, like uh, this basic course goes in and you're getting explain on uh, Java, um, um, and um, uh, Java related memory leaks and all. So, mm -hmm. so is there uh, at the end of the course is it uh, is it any 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 performance engineering uh, person can make it generic example say i am working on application which is python mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, so so how how does it help uh, does it help me for when i complete the course a generic in a generic way so you try you okay. got my question right i got your question so uh, probably you have to understand uh, two things here Python is a different programming language, okay, which is not JVM based, okay? Yeah. Few of the okay. programming languages that we have, like Kotlin you heard of, I believe, okay, which is uh, uh, JVM driven, 
okay so like java we have a kotlin which is jvm driven so this course will help you to at least this module i would not say this course this module will help you to gain knowledge on how JVM performance can impact your application performance and how tuning the JVM would help you to gain a performance in those languages. So those languages which are JVM driven will be happy to, uh, will be uh, okay. But a programming language like Python, right? Though Python also used a similar uh, approaches like interpretation, okay? May not be able to uh, get get that uh, benefit. The reason is uh, it provides an entire different runtime environment, right? Like uh, unlike Java. So any tuning mechanism that you may learn here will not be straight away able to implement in the Python. Okay. But my another point is that the approaches remain same. So let's say for a Python uh, language as well, if you're running an application and at the end of the application, you are seeing that you are getting out of memory error. Okay. How would you approach this particular problem and how would you get to the bottom, bottom of it? Would we also teaching you all those aspects? Though this module is very specific, we, would, we have picked up the Java language because it's one of that, uh, language being used heavily in the enterprise application but the approaches more or less remain same okay and that could be a programming language agnostic that means you can apply the same approach either in python or either uh, in java or any other language okay did i answer your question yeah sure thanks thanks uh... okay great so, uh, so we I'll be covering this uh, hotspot JVM architecture in detail because I strongly believe just by uh, understanding what objects are and what uh, JVM does and giving you some sort of uh, uh, tuning argument will not suffice you to do it by your own. So you need to understand how the JVM uh, architecture looks like and how it is running your java language your java programming to make you uh, to make it more faster okay to give you more performance in it we'll be happy to explain you that uh, introduction uh, to java heap how and where the objects are getting stored heap versus metaspace versus non heap right so we probably heard a lot of thing about heap but there are few other memory areas which are equally important like uh, metaspace or non heap few of the you you would be surprised to know that few of the operations are done on the non heap for your java based application based on the nature right how it is going to impact you and how it is going to impact your runtime environment or runtime performance is also we are going to teach you there right we are going to teach you the generalization hypothesis in hotspot JVM. Okay, uh, how and where from the idea of generation area came, and why it is implemented. Okay, so those are nitty gritty details we'll be covering. Uh, next topic is very important: is the garbage collection in uh, hotspot specifically. Uh, I will be picking up the hotspot as the main JVM engine. Okay, purpose of GC how it impact the application performance. So probably you heard of stop the world uh, application performance, but with the latest and greatest algorithm that we have, our target was to minimize the stop the world uh, activity, right? Stop the world activity is nothing but it pauses application threaded when it does a specific action in the whole garbage collection procedure, okay? So how we can minimize those stop the world that I'll be covering here. Performance metrics, how do you understand that whether uh, GC is performing well or not? Those things we'll be covering. Uh, I'll be covering all the garbage collection algorithm as, uh, as it is available in JDK 11. As I mentioned that, I'm equally familiar with JDK 14 but I don't want to touch on the JDK 14. The reason is 
most people are using, almost everyone are using in the industry, either JDK 8 or 11. So I think it would be more relevant if you understand it in detail for JDK 11. Okay. Uh, JVM arguments at the end, I will be introducing you to the JVM argument. How and what are those arguments help you to gain a better performance? Again, it's a real life example. We'll be seeing that by tuning certain parameters, how the performance of the application improves. Okay. Uh, as a part of this, we'll be also explaining you how to read the GC log, how to uh, what are the tools available in the market in the open source, uh, which will eventually help you to uh, understand the GC log, interpret the meaningful data out of it. By the way, GC log is a plain text format. So you can also read it through by your own, but you need to understand what are the different fields are log being logged in the GC log. So we'll be covering all those means if you wanted to do a manual study and if you wanted to use any other tools, open source tool, for reading through this GC log, we'll be covering both. Okay. And last but not the least, uh, the GC related issues, practical real time example of GC related issue. Okay. One thing I feel that you should also understand is a, something called JIT compilation. Okay. Which is also very much integral part of Java runtime performance. JIT compilation is not only the GC tuning, which would eventually give you better performance. It's also the JIT compilation which would eventually give you uh, a better performance. Okay, so we'll be co covering this uh, JIT compilation as well as a part of this uh, sub module. Okay, now go to the sub module two and three. These are uh, under module uh, sub module two, three, and four. Yeah, under a Java runtime, uh, Java performance engineering, right? So it's a huge uh, module, to be honest. And that is why I have uh, further uh, broke it down to sub modules, four sub modules. So in the sub module tool, uh, two will be focusing on the real time Java performance issue related to thread. Thread in the sense, each and every application Java is a multi-threaded application. I believe you, all of you know. What does it mean? That means that Java can fork different threads under Java process to help you achieve multi-threaded uh, request. Okay. You may get, and so a server may get n number of requests. And if you have a single threaded application which supports only single thread, you would probably understand that requesting 100, 100 uh, such requests or uh, responding to 100 such requests will take you uh, a, a good amount of time. Considering, let's say you have one second each to respond back for each and every request. So you would eventually need 100 seconds for 100 requests. On the contrary, if you have a multi-threaded application which supports 100 threads and if these 100 threads are allowed to independently run, then you can cover these uh, 100 requests in a second or two, right? Based on certain scheduling algorithm we have. I'm not going into that detail as of now, but there is an, another aspect that it, this request has to be independent uh, from uh, each other, okay? So you would straight away get a gain of uh, 100, uh, 100 times just by introducing the multi-thread, right? Uh, this is again a straightforward example. Uh, in practical, you may not get 100 times uh, faster, uh, faster uh, behavior. Rather, you may get uh, close to 90 to 80, 80 to 90 percent or times. Okay. So, I will be covering this thread dump analysis, right? Before going into the thread dump analysis, why you should, uh, why you should go and take a look at the thread dump. I'll be covering those symptoms as well, right? I, as a performance engineer, strongly believe that we have to be very much uh, knowledgeable to understand the performance pattern and then start digging into a specific, uh, or start uh, going into a debugging mode, right? If I see an issue with memory, there is no point of wasting time in the threading, thread dump analysis, right? So, 
as a performance engineer, we should understand the pattern of the problem and then focus us on certain debugging tool or strategies to dig it further, right? So you'll be happy to explain all those things. Uh, concurrency and multi-threading as a part of this course, I'll be covering at a Java level, okay? I would explain you the third dump analysis, uh, how to collect it, how to analyze it, and how to interpret it. So these are all things covered under submodule two. Uh, next part is submodule three cover the memory part of it. So you may face a lot of memory related issues like out of memory, GC related issues, insufficient heap. There are a lot of memory related issues that you may face for your Java runtime, uh, Java uh, enterprise level application. How to detect those problem, okay? Uh, we'll be covering uh, the out of memory issue, various reason associated with the out of memory issues. What is memory leak in Java application? How to identify it? What are the tools that we have? There is an important aspect of memory analysis called heap dump analysis, okay? It's just kind of taking a snap of the heap at a particular time to understand what exactly being spent, what amount of memory being spent by that objects, right? And is there any scope to further uh, optimize it? So we'll be covering all those stuff. And we will be using, again, a free source tool like MAT, Memory Analyzer tool in the, under the Eclipse uh, license, free, free source license, and uh, help you to get to the bottom of it, right? Uh, we'll be covering the pattern in the hip dump for memory related issues, okay? Last but not the least in this particular module is performance profiling in Java. We have a Java mission control, which is very strong tool provided by JDK community, which would eventually help you to get to the bottom of any finding any hotspot in Java application. Okay. You will be able to identify uh, locking. If you are aware of locking, locking is definitely not good for your application, but you cannot at the same time, you cannot avoid the locking. Okay, locking is a, a, a concept through which we are, we are ensuring that the consistency of the data, the atomicity of the data, right? In, uh, if you are from the computer science background, you probably heard of uh, consistency and atomicity um, of the data in databases, right? Uh, so through, through this locking, we are ensuring that. So we cannot simply uh, avoid locking, but we cannot, we can definitely minimize the impact of locking. So profiling tool will give you the benefits to identify all those areas, like uh, where exactly your application is being locked, how much time it is spending, uh, where exactly, which method exactly taking a good amount of time, which is an eventually a candidate for further performance optimization. So we'll be covering all those stuff through Java mission control specifically. We may cover J profiler, which is again a paid tool. We'll see that uh, how much we can cover, but my focus mainly would be with Java mission control as well as the JV VM. Okay, J Visual VM is again a tool given by the JDK community, uh, which will uh, definitely, I would say, I would rate J Visual VM little lesser than Java Mission Control, but equally important and equally uh, can give you that better insight into your application. Okay, uh, I would be touch base on the working worker thread concept and the database collection pooling, which would which is integral part of uh, any application, Java application container. You probably heard of WebLogic, WebSphere, Apache. So uh, these are containers providing your Java application to run, right? And this will also give you the benefit of using a better uh, threading model, better database connection pooling model. So we'll be covering all those aspects as well. And uh, we'll be uh, seeing that how that can be tuned. Okay, with that, we'll be uh, basically covering all the important aspects in the performance engineering practice in Java. Before going to the next module, I would like to take again a small pause for answering your question. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask.
uh, uh, hi, hello again. Uh, this is Ibrahim. So yeah, yeah, I, uh, I have small questions like you know, uh, but uh, it's uh, right time. Uh, I mean, right platform to ask this type of questions or not? I, I do not get. I will try to uh, try to understand. Uh, you know, you mentioned like data sets, right? You know, uh, mm-hmm. in first module one. What exactly data sets? It means it's a permutation and combination of data that we need to prepare or. Uh, or it is related something related to only engineering okay can i answer your questions ibrahim at the last uh, once we cover yeah, the sure, module sir. Okay, sir. because okay. Uh, okay. this is bit uh, off topic discussion but okay, i would be happy to answer your question please uh, ask this question at the end okay okay sure thank you okay any any questions on the java performance engineering uh, uh, modules that i covered just now okay i will take your silence as a no i i will take the credit that i would be, i i uh, i was uh, clear enough to explain myself and uh, explain about the course details uh, <laughs> i'm just joking by the way uh, anyway uh, if you have further questions or if you come across any other questions please feel free to reach out to kishore and uh, myself uh, to uh, get it clear okay so the next part is uh, i believe that as a full stack performance engineer you should also start understanding the database aspects of it as well right uh, database each and every application right uh, have a persistent store right the persistent store uh, having a different um, intention altogether is to serve your data serve your request like a typical database you probably heard of oracle database okay which is a kind of relational database okay relational database i'll i'll come to that part when we go through it but point here is each and every application need some persistent store to uh, to store your uh, personal information probably or for your let's say you are going to a e-commerce site and you wanted to purchase something right so in the persistent store it will be maintained your entire history of purchases will be maintained right so that in future uh, if you come across uh, you may go to your uh, personalized history and pick up from there rather than uh, searching the product again okay i can take an example i am a heavy user of big basket right big basket is giving you one feature uh, through which you can choose from your earlier history it can show you all the product which you purchased on a frequent basis in the history so that you don't have to search it again and uh, you don't have to uh, order it means reorder it again rather than you go to that particular list which is uh, a consolidated list based on your earlier search or earlier order history and would eventually make you make your user experience better okay so all e-commerce site provides you that so it's not about storing your personal information or your credit card information they also store your uh, buying history pattern to give you more and more better or better experience to you okay so persistent store helps you to get it okay persistent store uh, one example is oracle okay any application uh, as a high probability they may use a persistent store there might be a different uh, uh, mechanism altogether in persistent store uh, world nowadays you probably heard of uh, no sql database okay uh, oracle is primarily uh, the the in, the in the oracle world we really meant the oracle rdvms mainly and that is in sql based uh, database there are uh, other databases which are no no sql based okay which doesn't maintain relational database management system rules okay and they uh, they come under a different category unstructured uh, data store okay document data store so those categories are different from rdvms because of rdms is having some sort of limitation people came up with the concept of no sql database and uh, they eventually can be scalable okay in this course we'll be talking only about oracle rdms 
because most of the OLTP applications uses Oracle database. Uh, next uh, could be uh, M uh, MySQL. There can be few people, few customer may use SQL Server as well. Okay, so depends on the choices, but their rules for RDMS remain same. Relational database management system, they are uh, irrespective of Oracle or uh, they are irrespective of MySQL. Okay, so we'll be covering the basics of SQL and the basics of joining. We'll be covering the different components of Oracle database. What are the things you should monitor, how to debug, uh, what are the reports available by default in Oracle uh, RDBMS? How we can read it through, how you can interpret the data, how we can understand what is the performance board is. And I would eventually introduce you to the SQL tuning and the performance tuning in with respect to Oracle database, okay? So I will help you to rewrite the SQL code. I will help you to identify if there is any performance tuning parameter that may need to change to get you better performance from the Oracle world, okay? So this is all about uh, this performance engineering practice in Oracle database. Again, a very extensive course uh, like uh, performance engineering practice in Java and having an equal importance in full stack performance engineering. In, the, in that particular course, we have a module four, five, which is based on client and browser side performance. And mainly I'll be following a very, very uh, uh, popular model called Rail, uh, which is adopted by Google, uh, response, animation, ideal and load model to understand uh, what, uh, what is the web page performance, okay? And what are, what are the areas that you can focus on uh, from the web page performance point of view, okay? Different aspects of uh, client-side performance we'll be covering. We'll be using uh, Google's uh, PageSpeed Chrome developer tools mainly to understand how this web performance uh, can be measured and can be debugged and can be optimized further. And at the end, we'll be covering the best practices that should be followed by each and every website uh, to have a better client-side performance. Have you heard of Ola? Um, Ola is an app-based tool. Mostly uh, we are uh, either on Android or iOS platform. Uh, we are installing it as a tip on our handheld, handheld devices like mobile devices. But Ola also gives you uh, uh, a browser uh, means desktop version of it through browser, okay? Which can be used for offline customers as well, okay? You know, you will be glad to know that uh, I, I came across uh, in the recent past that uh, this particular example, which scores 100% in under Google PageSpeed uh, evaluation, okay? So I'll walk you through that how did they achieve it? What are the different aspects they have done uh, to achieve 100% score on the uh, page performance through Google PageSpeed, okay? So with this, uh, that covers the module five. I have only one module left. I have kept it side, uh, not uh, bringing into the module specific uh, phases. And I believe that this is equally important for a, a full stack performance engineer. This, this will cover the hardware performance aspect of it, how CPU memory storage play a part, how network performance play a part. And in nutshell, I will be explaining about how caching is more important in, in, in performance engineering world, okay? So with this, uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, completing this, uh, uh, the agenda of our training, uh, performance engineering training, as I mentioned that it's a approximately 40 hours course, and they may, that may extend up to 45 to 50 hours, okay? Uh, you may get in touch with uh, Kishore for any further queries, which should eventually can, uh, I can, I may be involved with you as well to answer you a few of your personal questions or any sort of personal uh, mentorship. Would be happy to help you there. Okay. With this, I would take a stop here. 
and try to answer your questions uh, from here onwards for the next uh, five ten minutes. Uh, guys, please feel free to ask uh, because if you don't ask, uh, uh, either I have explained you uh, very clearly, okay, or uh, if you are hesitant, don't be hesitant. Uh, it's a platform for everyone, right? So please ask your questions very freely. Don't bother about whether it's an intelligent question or dumb questions. Don't think about it. Please speak your mind. Uh Hello, uh, again, Ibrahim. Uh, yeah, Ibrahim, yeah. Yeah. So actually, you know, uh, after learning uh, this course, we will be like, you know, self food strapping learner to our company. So in our company, we don't have any performance in the, uh, you know, teams or anything, but we, they will be asking like mostly they are expecting to be ourselves as a uh, bootstrappers. But I have a mm -hmm. couple of questions at this point of time uh, from your, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. you said like, yeah, module one, you said like uh, data sets, right? So mm -hmm. what exactly data sets? I mean, as per my knowledge, uh, yeah. in an application, there are a number of records, which will be a permutation and combination of uh, uh, different inputs of data. So mm -hmm. that will be huge data. Are we expecting in, are we talking in those lines or uh, uh, are, are anything specific to engineering a, a data set? Okay. That is my first question. Okay. Uh, Ibrahim, can I uh, add one thing, uh, what you just said, right? And then I will come to that uh, data set uh, question, okay? okay? So you would have a better opportunity to, to set that expectation and to influence your management, right? Because you told that you right. don't have a performance engineering team at this moment. So if you right. remember in one of our slides, I, I explained how this course would eventually help you, okay? This course would eventually help you to influence your management to set up a performance engineering practice for your product, right? So okay. in that way, definitely you will be more influential, I would say, okay? When you okay. are trying to convince your management to set up a performance engineering practice, okay? Now coming to the data set, right? Data set is why it is very important. I told, I just give a glimpse, right? Let's say, uh, when Flipkart started, right, started their business, it was started in 2008 or nine, if I'm not wrong, with a book business, okay? Uh, I think uh, Sachin Bansal and uh, I forgot the name of the other uh, guy, uh, they were selling books in Bangalore and uh, they had a site, okay? And they had a very small user database right? Not every people are interested in buying the books. Only very, very few people or very uh, smaller quantity of uh, 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 e-commerce customers will be happy to buy a books, right? When they change their model from uh, selling the books to selling the electronic items, there was uh, definitely higher amount of customers visiting their site. Right, there was a higher amount of customers uh, uh, going to the site and purchase. Ibrahim, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because of the various product being sold at uh, by Flipkart, the various aspects, the various aspects of e-commerce, uh, definitely paying a part, and the customer base grew. Right. So when they started, probably it was around uh, 1 million. Oh, sorry, 1 million is a very big number. Let's say uh, 10,000. 10,000 customers were buying the books from uh, Flipkart. And in 2014, before going for a big billion uh, day sale, they might have uh, a customer base of 1 million. Okay. Now, okay. their product range grew, right? Earlier they used to sell books. Now they are selling uh, uh, everything, right? O on internet, right? Online. Their okay. product range grew. Their customer base grew. Their internals of customer behavior also grew, right? Now think about the data set now. 
earlier you have only one type of data set those customer who used to purchase a book now you have a different aspects of customer right one set of customer is still interested in purchasing book another set of customer are interested now in buying clothes another set of customers are interested buying in electronic goods but they all are eventually customers okay from different segments my point with the data set is that if you don't understand the data set right and if you don't cover all the aspects of the data set you would be losing a vital insight in your application right like if you take the same approach what you used to take in 2009 with flipkart with only having book selling uh, uh, business if you take the same approach in 2014 will you cover all the aspects no right everyone so no. you need to change your strategy based on the data set and based on the businesses as well right so okay. and your data set also grew 10000 customers and their related purchases versus 1 million customers and their related purchases i wanted to search that customer xyz what he or she purchased in the month of uh, october in the month of uh, last year october or november during the diwali sale let's say firing this query and getting back the result again 10000 customers versus 1 million customers are is going is it is it going to be changed answer me uh, ibrahim right right yeah there is a huge difference huge difference right that is how as a performance engineer we should understand the different aspects of data set right how it is going to impact yeah. your application performance so that is what i meant okay okay so uh, i got you uh, now uh, next question uh, like you know most uh, uh, organizations on a product based they are uh, launching uh, everything into native apps mobile okay mm -hmm. they may be like ios android windows mobile so how this uh, course will be uh, uh, you know uh, interlink with you know mobile performance or uh, engineering towards i mean mobile okay. performance engineering is there any uh, that's a very 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 good and relevant questions okay uh, is there a question complete or uh, you have any further question yeah completed yeah okay good completed so uh, this is for everyone right i would like to reiterate performance engineering approach will remain same okay your something called edge devices right there is a concept called edge devices okay you can collect you can collect the request from your web browser or through desktop or you can collect the request from your app ultimately the request when it reaches to the server it would eventually boils down to almost to the same right because they have a different channel okay uh and see i would like to explain a few more things here because without that uh, my answer would be incomplete nowadays we are going to a some microservice based architecture right where we would right. be creating uh, different microservices based on the different uh, uh request right yeah. but eventually why we are going towards microservice architecture is uh, we are going away from the monolithic architecture right rather than deploying each and everything in a single shot we are deploying uh, uh, on a module specific way so that one module maintaining one module should not have any impact on other module right at the same time our request once it reaches i am talking very from a very high level point of view okay so uh, you may have the customer one set of customer right let's say flipkart if again flipkart user may have uh, an user base who are still using uh, desktop who are still using laptop and using browser based access right few user like you may use uh, mobile devices okay so you wanted to purchase a uh, washing machine let's say okay once you put a request to app eventually once it once it reaches to the server of flipkart 
they will boil down to a same request and irrespective of whether you are using whether the end customer are using browser or an app uh, ibrahim are you able to get it yeah yeah, yeah right? I can get it. so your performance engineering approach at a server side will remain same how your server will handle a purchase of washing machine okay would eventually go through various aspects of the buying and eventually get you the response back that would remain same right your age devices may change but the overall strategy of handling the request at the server side uh, will almost remain unchanged why we call as the almost i will probably discuss you when we go into the module specific training okay but in nutshell it would not change much from a performance engineering aspect definitely the client side performance that i talked about here right in the module 5 we may take a different approach for a, a mobile device for a, an app based application okay uh, it's a good point that you made abraham i can probably you add one more uh, sub point here under module 5 which would eventually help you to understand how we can collect the data for an app from a mobile app perspective okay and uh, i think uh, kishore is already covering how to do a mobile app based performance testing so any question related to testing probably kishore will take it up but approaches would almost remain same They're right yeah so we will we will be covering uh, that piece also that uh, core piece also in our uh, uh, i will be covering uh, that uh, yeah. in under module 5 not testing testing will be covered by Ms. I think no, testing we are not expecting, but uh, how to look at this and uh, how yeah, to, yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, and one small two questions, you know, uh, I will be wrapping up uh, because I know I'm not getting other persons to give an opportunity, but uh, I'm no closing. problem. Yeah. So, uh, one more, like, you know, uh, uh, already one of uh, our friends covered this, uh, uh, you know, uh, two, two aspects here coding aspects and database aspects. Mm -hmm. First, ask from the database aspects. So here, uh, from performance engineering practice in Oracle database, let's say the, uh, in an organization for a product-based platform, uh, there will be multiple database connected. Like you know, uh, somebody are going more on the web services part. Uh, they are using MongoDB as a content. Yeah. Yeah. So if I learned Oracle database from your uh, uh, curriculum, so mm -hmm. you, you will it be to possible to implement the same uh, more or less in the SQL Server or MongoDB? Okay. Let me help you to understand, right? Yeah. There, it might uh, be very fancy to understand NoSQL database, right? But you need to understand how many users, how many customers are using it, okay? Many, most of that business are running on the OLTP platform. OLTP is online transaction processing, okay? Right. This NoSQL database are not meant majorly meant for a uh, OLTP based application. Okay. These are defined yeah. apart from search search library. I believe you heard of Lucene. You read. Okay. Have yeah. you heard of Lucene? No, 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 I did not. Okay. Uh, um, uh, let me not go into that details and confuse you. I don't want to confuse okay. you. My point here is that this MongoDB though they are also providing a feature of real time uh, searching okay but they are mainly built for uh, it's a kind of uh, olap kind of application olap you know right online right, right. An analytical, an analytical yeah. process right there is a fundamental difference between oltp and olap oltp right. is meant for real time uh, application access Whereas Wallap yeah, is yeah, meant for yeah. more of an analytical purpose, right? Yeah, yeah, analytical purpose. There will be, you know, uh, facts and dimensions there. Yeah, exactly. And they may not need your response immediately. Okay. Right. So if you ask me, still the enterprises, different customers are still, they are using the RDBMS. Okay. 
Like e-commerce, they are mainly focusing on this NoSQL for their analytical purpose. I mentioned, if you remember, if you log into Big Basket on any e-commerce site, you will be providing, you will be provided with your historical purchases, right? Which would eventually help you to make your order or place your order very quickly because you want to go through the list quickly rather than searching a new item, right? Those analytical yeah. uh, processing being done by these NoSQL databases. I can give you n number of examples. You know, uh, Facebook has written a new database altogether, okay, which is okay. blazing fast. It's called RocksDB, okay. RocksDB is written on C, okay, because uh, they wanted to have a faster uh, performance, they uh, wrote it in uh, C. So see, RocksDB, what it does, it gives you the library and any database can use it, right? So there might be a number of solution like Apache Cassandra, there is another solution which is very popular in open source, right? Apart from MongoDB, which are equally giving you the good performance, but they are meant for uh, analytical process mainly, okay? So my point here is that Ibrahim, uh, if you are working for an application which is eventually using OLTP based application and eventually being used uh, by RDBA mails, right? This particular module will help you to get inside because RDBA mails is one generic concept being implemented by Oracle, being implemented by Microsoft as well. For SQL. Yes, everyone is using, yeah. yeah. So if you understand how Oracle works, because Oracle is having a better uh, market capture, still in OLTP world, 70% is the market is being captured by Oracle. Okay, that is why yeah. I wanted to wanted you guys to learn Oracle. Okay, All right. Because so now you'll be teaching us in Oracle, and we need to implement in SQL Server. That is that is the challenge over here. So, you know, uh, in our organizations, we are using SQL Server, MongoDB, and many, many other organizations, they have their own databases. Yeah. You know, uh, that's what I mean. I, I'm trying to inline what we learned and what we can implement. That's what I am. You can straight away implement those concepts in SQL Server. Okay. So, similar way coding also, right? One of my friends is asked already on Python. Now, uh, teams are using, like, you know, React. Uh, uh, .NETs and you know ASP, a combination of multiple coding standards in where they want to integrate. Mm -hmm. So we can use similar as well, right? See, uh, I told you, coding is different from the approaches. Okay. Right. If you ask me to write a code in Python for writing uh, or uh, uh, writing a recursive function, we have Java is having its own standard, own syntax. Python is having its own syntax, right? But algorithm remains same. You you understand what I meant, right? Yeah. Approaches is nothing but an algorithm. Okay. So if you wanted to do a recursion, the generic approach is what? You have to call this function multiple times. Now writing the code in Python and Java, because they are their syntax is different, is having a different aspect. Right, their runtime may have a different aspect, but the approach or implementation remains same. So my point is that whether you are using Python or Java, your performance engineering aspects of identifying the problem related to thread or memory would almost remain same. But here we will be covering Java, so I'll be more specific in covering those tools, which is Java specific, not Python specific. Okay. Okay. So but, I'm done with the questions. Yeah. Uh, my my point here is that even if your application current assignment uh, is with Python or any other language other than Java, uh, you still learn the approaches and start implementing in your current work, right? So that is, that is going to help you for sure. Okay. So any material or templates finally uh, you're going to provide at the end of this course? Or... Uh, materials, I'll be providing you all the uh, PPTs which I'll be covering in that uh, particular session. 
okay and i think uh, uh, kishor can clarify i think uh, kishor uh, will there be any recorded session or how, how you are doing it yeah we can provide recorded session okay so uh, so course material will be uh, the ppts and the recorded session okay everybody yeah any more questions from anyone else okay so let's wrap up the session so thanks everyone thanks or first of all like you know for uh, uh, you know for your uh, time over the weekend uh, in the such a short notice and uh, thanks to participants also to for, you know to everyone who made it interactive uh, so i'm sharing uh, sarav with your consent i can can i share my screen yeah yeah please i am stopping it here uh, yeah. sure yeah please feel free to share sure yeah uh, so you know like uh, so you know like we planned this 40 to 50 hour course completely on open source tools if some if anyone is looking you know on tool specific like if you want you know if you if someone want to cover you know want want to uh, course on their tool specific like you know whether it is uh, load on enterprise or you know load on cloud or Java. so basically let me explain uh, you know i classified these course contents into two parts like course contents for pressures or business and you know advanced concepts for working performance testing this all right as you can see here so if you want any tool specific training like yes you know i am starting a new batch from july 15th uh, july 15th or july 20th all right so where wherein i would be covering like you know uh, these concepts like you know for those who are already working as performance testing units i would be covering this load runner enterprise load runner cloud java gc concepts and linux commands git github cicd with jenkins and uh, docker kubernetes microservices right and monitoring and analysis uh, you know at the because we have you know uh, uh, so, so we have sort of here like you know who has rich experience in you know like uh, in engineering right so i will be covering like monitoring and analysis uh, uh, right and i will be covering like jmeter integration with influx db grafana and lk stack and splunk with dashboard queries and uh, introscope you know we don't have a trial version so subject tool availability i can cover this so apart from that i can cover dynatrace awr report analysis and uh, thread dump and heap dump analysis and performance engineering with real time use cases so if you if someone is looking for tool specific training right so this is the uh, these are these would be the course kind of course contents like uh, in the batch like which i am starting from july 15 uh, the the course like which kumar gave a demo session now uh, is particularly extensively and exclusively with open source tools uh, and those who are already working in performance testing those who are you know having like Oh, more than four or five years experience in performance system all right so i think like i have made the point clear and uh, uh, thanks or like for the nice session so we have you know uh, that gave a clear idea like uh, you know like how the track, uh, course would be and it gave a foresight of uh, you know how we will be benefited everyone will be benefited from your rich experience uh, and thanks thanks everyone from to all the participants like for making the session interactive and joining in the short notice yeah yeah uh, thanks to you uh, kishor for arranging it for all of us and giving us the platform to discuss as i mentioned that uh, uh, please reach out to kishor uh, for all your queries and he may redirect it to me uh, for anything specific to the performance engineering and i would be happy to help you and uh, kishor uh, please uh, uh, my request if you anybody wants to have a chat uh, with me one and one um, uh, please redirect it to me okay yes yeah, sure, definitely yeah okay great yeah and these are the course content for beginners like you know as we have some few beginners like uh, uh, right so who want to pursue career in performance system these are the course content for beginners performance system basics and load runner professional 2020 with three protocols load runner say web web services to client and the jmeter 5.3 so you know like uh, we are doing jmeter certification 5.3 certification with the participants like other trainees 
so we are you know like in my current daily batch like 50% of the people are already certified and uh, have done their jmeter certification right and monitoring with open source tools and analysis so this is for beginners okay uh, those who want to pursue their career in performance testing and those who want to enter performance testing right and developer tools fiddler and basic sql queries sql tools like toad and git and git and github so these are the course contents for beginners and as i explained just now these are the course contents for you know like uh, you know if someone is looking for tool specific training like you know as i mentioned here like dynatrace or splunk or uh, intoscope right or inflex db grafana or jmeter integration with inflex db grafana and elk stack and all this all right and finally like uh, uh, this is my channel youtube channel uh, please like share subscribe to my channel and thanks everyone for your time over the weekend uh, all right uh, with this we will wrap up the session yep sure once again thank you everyone uh, thanks for the participations feel free to reach out and uh, i hope that we will be uh, seeing you sooner okay thank you bye bye Thank you so much.